God is an awesome God. Would you agree or disagree? Do you think he knows what's best for us? Are you sure? Are you willing to follow? Because if you're not willing to follow, then you're just talking. God will lead you, can lead you, and has more pedigree than we do. So he knows exactly what we should be doing, when we should be doing it, and how we should be doing it, right? Even this hour, we are gathered here because this is what God has ordained. The church, the local assembly, to come together to learn and to grow and to challenge one another. Amen? And you cannot do it without having a conversation about this word. So 1 Corinthians 5th chapter, beginning at verse 6, I will read from the ERV. Your proud talk is not good. You know the same, just a little yeast makes the whole batch of dough rise. Take out all the old yeast so that you will be a new batch of dough. You really are bread without yeast, Passover bread. Yes, Christ, our Passover lamb, has already been killed. So let us eat our Passover meal, but not with the bread that has the old yeast, the yeast of sin and wrongdoing. But let us eat the bread that has no yeast. This is the bread of goodness and truth. I wrote to you in my letter that you should not associate with people who sin sexually. But I did not mean the people of this world. You would have to leave the world to get away from all the people who sin sexually or who are greedy and cheat each other or who worship idols. I meant you must not associate with people who claim to be believers but continue to live in sin. Don't even eat with a brother or sister who sins sexually, is greedy, worships idols, abuses others with insults, gets drunk, or cheats people. It is not my business to judge those who are not part of the group of believers. God will judge them. But you must judge those who are a part of your group. The scriptures say, make the evil person leave your group. I want to speak from the subject, am I a judge? Am I a judge? One of the things that we like to talk about is that you're not my judge. You don't have a right to judge me. God is my judge. But yet, reading this scripture, it clarifies who we are to judge versus who we are not to judge. And it's not judged in a judgmental situation, it's judged in a righteousness kind of situation. In other words, I'm not to judge this world. That's God. The world is going to do what the world is going to do. That's who they are. And the Bible says, when I said to come out, there's no way in the world you could disassociate yourself from the people that you work with, the people in your neighborhood. All of these folks who go around you, come around you, but those are not the ones who are in your circle. That's a difference. The world, your circle. So when it comes to your circle, am I a judge? Now, the scripture says, 
Don't even eat with a brother or sister who sins sexually, is greedy, worships idols, abuses others with insults, gets drunk, or cheats people. Why is this so significant? Because if we associate or if we hang then it says we co-sign the activity from believers you say you are a believer for a reason it is because you have given your life to Christ because you understand the sacrifice, the price that he paid for our lives. So therefore, I'm in an association with Christ. And those who I hang with should also associate with Christ. The Bible declares not to be unevenly yoked. Why? Because if I'm unevenly yoked, then I'm going to go to and fro, and that's not what God wants from us. Even when you read the Old Testament, when God had promised his children a promised land, he told them to remove the sin. Wipe those people out. Why? Because if you allow them to stay, they will infiltrate you. Why? Because it's easy to commiserate with wrong and it is for us to work to do right. It requires no effort to fall into sin. I know when I left my, 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 my humble home of my mother and my father and I went out into this hellish world, they had open arms for me. And I was quickly consumed by the evilness that was around me. But for me, it wasn't evil. It was my righteousness. Why? Because it gave me a joy and a fulfillment that I, myself, my flesh, could not and would not fight. Why? Because of my association, those who I hung with, those who I, I dealt with, those things that they did, the stuff that I didn't do before. But now I found myself assimilating to what they were doing. So now the, the, the world is going to do what it wants to do. Why? Because it's ran by Satan. Doesn't care about what this word says. Doesn't care about what God says. Doesn't care if you're a believer. I, 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 you know, there's a, there's a big tour going on right now. There's a renaissance tour with Beyonce so-called beehive that, that follows her. You know the problem with that whole situation is that there are believers who co-sign her mess. But more than that, she herself has stated that she is a believer. But yet if you butt naked on stage... How does that represent the Christ that you say you serve? When the Bible says to come away from those who are living sinfully, especially those who claim to be believers. That's, 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 that's a key caveat right there, right? As a believer, we have a responsibility to the one in whom we believe. That would be Jesus Christ. Died for our sins. Paid an ultimate price. So that one day we would be free in glory under the tutelage of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So there was a price that was paid and yet we hold allegiance to everything but God. We don't want to look at that. We don't want to point that out. 
we don't want to really live the life that God has called us to live. So we live the way we want to live and then we find scriptures to fit the stuff that we do and say it's okay. Say God understands. No, would you understand if you laid down your life for somebody and as soon as they say, well, I appreciate that, but I'm going to do me. I take your blood. I never forget one time when I was in the VA, a woman who had a, a I think it was a, a bad lung or something. She had some kind of disease and she had to get a transplant. She was a smoker. Transplant came from somebody that wasn't a smoker who passed, but it saved her life. So you would think that when you got this new lung, you wouldn't do the same stuff that you was did that destroyed your first lung. But the problem is that if you don't leave that smoking mentality, if you don't leave smokers and things of that nature, then that sinful way will keep creeping up. And next thing you know, now you're smoking again in this new, fresh, healthy lung. What you were saying is, I really don't care. I should have died the first time. So what are what believers saying? Lord, I appreciate what you did for me. But I'm going to do me because I believe I've been covered by the blood. Now, that's a dangerous use of knowledge. Because we have been freely forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we know that God sees us as righteous because we have the blood that's on us. Right? Right? Because we have accepted that he was born of a virgin. We accept that he, he lived and walked this and taught on this planet. We accept that he died in our place. We accept that he got up on the third day morning. And we accept that he's coming back again. So all those things will keep me in line with saying, I am a believer. I do belong to God. I've been predestined for this situation. But it does not require me to live according to what the scriptures say. I just have to walk in my forgiveness. But the Bible says that when you become a new creature in Christ, the old things should pass away. And so then when a brother or a sister in Christ, if you're in the circle, comes to you with your foolishness and put it on blast, now you get offended. Who are you to judge? Well, let me go to 1 Corinthians 5. And, and, and you in my circle. And, and, and so if you in my circle, I want to make sure... I'm living right, and I want to make sure you're living right. So the Bible says that I can't keep dealing with the same old yeast that I used to deal with because we realize that yeast will make the situation worse because when you put yeast in the dough, it makes it double. So if I keep allowing your foolish yeast from your old ways to keep infiltrating my lifestyle, that puts me at risk. Why? Because truthfully, I'm not strong enough to fight my flesh if I don't have enough Jesus and relationship in me. So your sins, those sins that I used to commit, I find myself, even Paul said, the good that I want to do, I don't find myself doing, but all that I don't want to do, I, I find myself doing because there is a spiritual war between the flesh and the spirit that is trying to get you off the game when Christ is trying to keep you on track. So you got to police yourself. You got to police those who are around you because if I travel with like minds, I'm going to be least likely to fail. That's why you have a church. That's why you have a gathering. That's why you have an assembly of saints because you, you need to figure out who's on the Lord's side. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Not the Lord and Beelzebub. we just going to serve the Lord. Moses said, figure out which side you're going to stand on. Either you're going to worship the golden calf or you're going to worship the father. 
You got to make a decision. But you can't make it if you keep hanging with chickens. You can't make it if you keep hanging with crows when you're supposed to be an eagle. You're supposed to be a child of God. And so when we're dealing with this situation, we got to understand that every time we wake up, and I told y'all about this, when you wake up in God, you better wake up with an intentional spirit. Intentional about serving God. Intentional about who you let into your space. Intentional about being who God has called you to be and not who you think you ought to be. Intentional. That means you wake up with a mindset to do what? Serve the Lord. And so if you wake up with a mindset to serve the Lord, why are you hanging with folks who are sexually deviant in all that they do? Why do you hang out with folks who gossip continuously all the time? Folks who are lying, folks who are cheating, folks who are stealing, and this is, I'm not talking about the world. Let's not get it twisted. They gonna lie, cheat, steal, scandal, everything you think about. If you think about the most popular television shows, it's always about some scandal. Folks love dirt. Ooh, what's gonna happen next? I can't believe she doing that. And you all locked in, they put something righteous on TV, you like, yeah. Ain't nobody got no time for learning and educating yourself. You know, I want to know who's sleeping with who, who doing what. And entertainment is giving you exactly what you need to pull you away from God. Why? Because it occupies your mind with emptiness. So much emptiness that you can't even handle truth. I was watching uh, the clone in Tyrone. And that's not something I would even normally watch. But I said, let me give it a shot. You know, why? Because you got to know what's going on out in this world, right? right. So I'm watching this movie. And I'm like, oh, that's legit. This got some stuff in it. Somebody who wrote this knows something about the situation that's going on in the hood. And so now, because I have knowledge... And understanding, I can see it. But for somebody who don't, they ask the question, well, I don't get it. Everything you watch is not meant to entertain you. But some things that you think are entertaining are there to teach. It's almost like the boondocks as well. My, my, my oldest son watched the booth and said, yeah, man, that, that, that was great, so that was funny, it was funny. I said, son, look at it again. I said, because you looked at it for the entertainment factor, you didn't look at it for the educating factor of what they were trying to say. And when they say too much, the powers that be start shutting you down. And then they take it to more buffoonery than knowledge. Because knowledge is that we lack. Because we got too much emptiness in space. Why? Because we keep hanging with folks who ain't trying to follow, but say they believe us. And so then when we call them out, because we can't really call them out either. Why? Because we're doing the same dirt. You know that misery loves company, right? Even in the church. I told y'all, for every empty seat, there's a demon sitting right there. When you come in, they come in with you. When you leave, some leave, some stay. They don't have to have an audience to, to, to mess up the atmosphere. I got to make sure this place ain't going to be completely covered. So I got angelic hosts all around this place. But in the midst of that, demons come. You know, how, how, how can demons come in the midst of angelic hosts? Well, did not Job say? See, some of y'all know where where I'm going with this. I'm not even going to finish that thought because you need to know and understand what I'm saying. That, 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 yeah, yeah, just because angels are present doesn't mean that Satan and the demonic hordes have vacated. So, therefore, you got to be in charge of your circle. You got to protect your walk. 
You got to protect your life because it depends on it. Every day when I wake up, if I, if, look, I used to be out there fornicating and not proud of it whatsoever because I realize now what the scripture was saying. You know, when I'm out there and I'm fornicating, what it is, is that when I do finally find my good thing, I bring my past and my experiences into my good thing. And then I try to make my good thing recreate some of the past when my good thing ain't doing what my past was doing. Now my mind has been tainted. And it affects my relationship because I'm expecting something that she was never meant to give me because I got something I was never meant to have because we were supposed to learn together. But nobody checked me. As a matter of fact, even within the church, I'm like, well, yeah, man, you know, you, you, you got to go and experience some stuff, do I? Where in the scriptures does it say, I need to try before I buy? So we become sexually confused at what we do. We say, well, at least we got it right. <laughs> Anything outside of a, a man and a woman, a husband and a wife, under the authority of God, is the only thing sanctioned by God. Now, even though the world has redefined it, the Bible doesn't redefine it. So if the Bible don't redefine it, then believers can't redefine it. So you can't make it fit just because it goes along with your personality. Well, part of the person, I told y'all that before you got here, you was a blank slate. Through time, trial, and error, you have become who you are. And association has also you, allowed you to become who you are. And so if you don't separate from that, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. Why? Because your walk is going to be tainted. And so you really can't speak to anybody until you get it right. So while I'm out here fornicating and even adultery, how can I tell you that I know about the goodness of the Lord when everything I do says otherwise? And I had to realize, wait a minute, if, if, if I'm going to walk with God, then I got to walk. I got to deny. Here, here's the thing that people don't want to hear. I need to deny my flesh. I'm married for 27 years. But I still got a fornicating spirit. I still got an adulterating spirit if I allow my flesh to stand up. If I hang with boys that co-sign, hey, look, she ain't never going to know. You good? And plus, God, he already got you. He already died. For, look, God knew you was going to do it before you did it. So you covered. I'm hanging with chickens. I'm setting myself up for failure and I don't understand what the scripture is saying when it says to remove them from your group. Now, why is it so important to remove them? Because it tells them that as believers, we're not going to put up with your nonsense, with your foolishness, with your misinterpretation of God's word. And so when you put them outside of the group, it's going to cause one or two things. One, for them to figure out, hey, if I'm really going to walk with God, I got to straighten up my life. Or I don't need y'all no more. If I don't need y'all no more, then you go ahead, but at least you go ahead, you do whatever you do with your own knowledge and understanding, but me and my circle, we good. Because we didn't co-sign your mess. That's the job of a believer. To judge one another. To make sure we're walking in the same right path so that we can be strong, solid, and united. You ever wonder why Ruth and Naomi's situation works so well? I told y'all that wherever you go, take God with you. To me, Naomi took God with her, Ruth the Moabite, the Gentile, 
the sinner was reconciled because of Naomi's relationship with God that Ruth watched. So even when Naomi say, look, y'all need to go find y'all some husbands. I, I'm, I'm an old maid now. Ain't no good coming out of this situation. Uh, Ruth was the only one that Oprah, she left. She's like, yeah, you're right. I need a man. I got to get me somebody. You ain't got, ain't no more, ain't, you know, ain't nothing, you ain't. Ruth said, no matter where you go or what you do, I'm not leaving you. Your God will be my God. Who you serve, I'll serve. Ruth had to deny her flesh. But because she denied her flesh, she became a part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. This uncircumcised. Why? Because Naomi lived how she was supposed to. We need to live how we're so, you know, you can talk about sexual sin, you can talk about drunkenness, you can talk about lying, cheating, stealing, and all these things. The thing is that when you're walking with Christ, you need to have a spirit of righteousness.